Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And subscribe over at BPAL Picks as well on Patreon.com. I will put that link in the description and follow me at JJBorah26 on Twitter. It's going to be BPAL's free NFL picks and leans, as you can see. I'm the B part of PAL, Joey B, as Pirlo. Steve is going on vacation this weekend, so have a great and joyous vacation. These are going to be our later picks, picks and leans that we're going to send to our good buddy and have him share on his channel as well to help advertise ours, and we really appreciate that. Uh, for the Miami and 49ers game, which is one of the first ladder games, uh, I'm definitely going to give that one to the 49ers. It's at home. They're going to bounce back over their defeat to the Eagles, and they're going to have a good game this week, I humbly believe. And bounce back against the Dolphins, who t simply tend to play close and play really close games. So it wouldn't be the worst idea to take the Dolphins spread because you would just need them to lose by less than nine points. Because the Dolphins have battled pretty good, but I do believe the 49ers would win. But I could see them winning by just a touchdown with how good the Dolphins have battled. So that spread towards the Dolphins end would not be a bad play because they would have to lose by more than nine points, which quite frankly... Uh, with how San Francisco is a little bit off with their backups. I think that's probably not going to happen, but that's also a pretty good lean as well. My pick for sure is the 49ers winning, and then I would lean toward doing the spread on the Dolphins just because they have a good chance of keeping that within a nine-point game. Excuse me. And then if we go to the Indianapolis Colts and Cleveland Browns, it starts at 425 on Sunday. That's one of the better games of the day. Got Bake Show against Phillip Rivers. Chubb is out for the Browns. Hunt still has an issue too, so he's questionable. So they're going to really hope that Kareem Hunt's back as an all-pro level running back to be able to be back there for them. If not, you'll probably see D. Ernest Johnson get a lot of the carries for them there. And I do personally believe that the Browns are still going to win that game at home, whether D. Ernest Johnson is their bulldog guy because Kareem Hunt can't go, but I personally believe Kareem Hunt will probably be able to go for some carries, and then they'll use Ernest Johnson to not have to overuse Kareem Hunt, and I think that'll be able to put them over the hump to still be able to mix in their run game and be able to pass it about 25 or so times with Baker Mayfield, who averages about like 187 yards per game, so they mix it up pretty good there in Cleveland, so I think they're going to continue to do so, and that'll get them the win over the Colts. Um, I would also, obviously, if you put it in soon, when I'm looking on score right now, the spread is only 1.5. I would obviously, when the spread is only 1.5, 100% put that in because I think, th I believe the Browns are going to win. And obviously, in order to win a football game, you have to win by more than one point. So, I mean, you don't have to. I guess that's the wrong way to put it. But, I mean, I, I, the way I meant to put it is a field goal is more than one point, a touchdown is more than one point. There's just usually you win by more than one point is probably the best way to put that. Obviously, there's ways because of field goals and touchdowns put together mathematically, you can win by one point. But there's no one point play in football is what I meant to say. So I believe the Browns will win that game and they're going to win by at least a touchdown, I think. And then the Giants and Cowboys is really a game that both of these teams have been downtrodden and bad and just haven't been very good. The Cowboys have blown games. The only reason they have one win is because the Falcons blew a game on pure stupidity. Um, so that's the reason they have one win. They will have two wins, though, after Sunday, as they will take down the New York Giants in Dallas. But I will not play the spread on that, because I could see this being closed. Dallas has been abysmal. I don't know if they win by over a touchdown, uh, which the spread is 8.5, so I wouldn't mess with that, but I would definitely put them in for the ML. Now, this game is more of a lean because we know the Vikings have a lot more in their tank. But I will definitely still lean Seattle, especially at Seattle. But we know the Vikings eventually are going to have a big win this year. And does this game the chance to do it? Potentially, because they they haven't been as good as we believe they can be. And we know that's going to come out eventually. But I would still heavily lean uh, Seattle there, in my humble opinion. And then... We also have different picks that you can check out on our Patreon for the 49ers and uh, Dolphins game, which was a paid pick, by the way. Um, that's one that, because it's part of a parlay, I was still able to give out on this video because the parlay, that was just one of the more throw-in things. 
49ers are favored and pretty solid in that game of minus 380 towards that money line. So that's a paid play, which you can go on BPAL picks, as you see down here on Patreon, to be able to get all those plays. But the the um, Broncos and Patriots is right now moved to Monday at 5 p.m. That game, I believe, is going to go to the Patriots, no matter who's behind the center for the Patriots. Uh, that game should go to the Patriots. I think they're figuring it out against the Broncos, and they'll be able to um, be able to win this game. Locke is a 50-50 to return, but I still believe Belichick and the Patriots, even if Drew Locke's in, especially in his first game back, it's not easy to play the Patriots after being out a few weeks. I think the Patriots are going to get that game. Um, now, as for the spread or anything like that, I wouldn't have a play on that right now because, one, it's not even out yet, but two, I still think I wouldn't touch it that much because the Patriots or the backup quarterback have a chance of this being a very close game. And then Tuesday, if it goes on as planned, same with the Patriots game, if that goes on as planned, they move the Bills and Titans back to Tuesday at 7. That's a game, oh, we skipped over the Chargers and Saints. That game, I believe, will go to the Saints. Uh, the Chargers, they're going to battle. It's going to be close, so I wouldn't take the spread because Herbert's kept it close all and all and through and through this year. I would take. I would lean the over of 51 points in that game, though, because if the Saints offense can get going, Herbert's competed very well. I could see that game easily going over the 51-point threshold, but I do see the Saints winning. Now, on to the final game which is the Bills and Tennessee, if it happens. The Bills and Tennessee is the best game of the week if it's able to go on. I will still lean the Bills because I think they have a little bit more firepower. I know it's on the road, but I will still lean them. Josh Allen's QBR is ridiculous, as well as his quarterback rating of 122.7. Tannehill's also been playing very well, but Josh Allen has just been an MVP caliber quarterback so far. I'm going to lean the Bills on that one. But this has been our free Picks, NFL Picks and Leans, brought to you by BPAL. I am Joey B. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at JJBoller26. And follow Steve at Pirlo's NHL Pal. That's where you can find Pirlo at Pirlo's NHL Pal on Twitter. And then BPAL, free NFL Picks and Leans, has been brought to you by BPAL Picks, of course. And I'm Joe Boric. And for Steve Duncan, who's also part of BPAL Picks, have a great, safe, and pleasant night, everybody. Enjoy all the great football this weekend. Peace out.